how do you do that? Do you do that? How the heck are you? So I braved the elements to get a couple trips to uh, Mother's. Uh, they had, uh, unleashed uh, the milk this weekend, man. or this week actually, but that was the weekend before I could get there. Anyways, uh, I've got a flight here, which consists of A215 milk. I also put D, the mezcal milk, the rum barrel milk and the brandy milk and then uh, I got a flight plus and this is the 2017 so the only one I'm missing from what they have available is the 2016 and the main reason I skipped that one well is because I have a few bottles at home for last year's year so oh gosh oh, the nose is crazy this is the 2017 I've got in my hand so let me compare that to the 2015 here. Well, the main thing I noticed right away on the 2015, the difference on the 2017, is is uh, the oak. It's very woody on the nose. So let's just put that aside there now. Let's just enjoy the 2015 first, shall we? Oh man, I love this beer. I gotta tell you, you know, I mean, look, I'm a fan of anything in the spirits for all my bourbon barrel guy, but heck, you know, you want to chuck it and everything, I'm down with that too. Oh, the nose is crazy. Again, I'm gonna uh, get more wood than this for now, but I'm gonna forget that one for now. Let's just talk about this one. A whole lot of oak, uh, uh, a whole lot of oak on the 2015. Uh, certainly some dark chocolate. Uh, certainly some dark fruits as well. I'm personally getting a lot of raisins. This, this, this is raisins, booty and raisins, and dark chocolate, so it's not a surprise that I get those dust and drops. Uh, I'm also getting some date like notes as well. Oh gosh, that's just gorgeous. I gotta tell you. Wow. Now you should really be jealous of me right now. <laughs> wow, this is amazing, man. Oh. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, good God. I'm going to take a drink of the 17. I'm going to set that down for a second. Again, what I noticed the most on the nose is that, that the nose on the 17 feels very mellow. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Yeah, it does feel a little hotter, <laughs> as you might expect. It is the new version. This is it for years. Here we got. Do I think it's too hot? No, not for me. Not for my palate. It's not. Although I think some may think so. So I also picked up the mezcal barrel milk. So I'm gonna put uh, 2015 aside for just a second. Bear with me. Well, I changed the camera angle just a touch, and I grabbed this one. I w you can choose four that you want to try for this one. I want to try the Mezcal, mostly because, well, if you know me, you don't know, I don't particularly care for Mezcal or tequila, but I just wanted to see what it did. Uh, it's a variant that I haven't had at any time, so I was very curious. Unblended, aged in a single Mezcal barrel. So there you go. Oh, wow, uh, wow. <laughs> uh, you, you can really feel the nose change right away. Of course, you do feel those milk notes, right? I mean, uh, it's a big imperial stat, uh, imperial stat, dark chocolate, crazy. Cocoa names, I believe it says on the bottle. But you do feel the, 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 those mes mescal notes on the name. Wow. Uh, whoa, whoa. Okay, here's the honest truth. Honest truth is I don't know how much I like this particular variant, but it is different, and that's why I wanted to try it. I think it's going to be one of those variants that people are really going to love and not so much. This isn't necessarily work for my pound, but I think it is going to work for a lot of folks. It is good. The mezcal kind of changes flavors for me. I'm also, I'm also in this particular area. 
I, I'm, I'm almost feeling like a. I feel, I'm gonna feel the best cat, but I almost feel like a, there's a like like a, a sour cherry note in the film. So I'm gonna put D aside and move to E, which is the rum barrel milk. I can get it out without messing everything up. Unblended aged in a single rum barrel. Oh, wow. For whatever reason, I, I do not know, but I do notice right, right here on the nose, the dark chocolate, I think that rum barrel somehow pushes that dark chocolate to the forefront. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird to me. I, I do feel the dark chocolate more, than, especially than that. You know, the uh, the mezcal for sure. It's, it's interesting. Uh, it also adds a little bit of sweetness that, that that doesn't seem to be in the others. That rum barrel will give you some of that sweetness. So I'm going to put that one off to the side here. While I try to get out very carefully, the brandy mill. Blend of, blend of, great, blend of great brandy barrels inside. Wow, wow. Well. Getting a lot of fruit on the nose on this one. It feels to me certainly like a, a blend of, 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 uh, a blend of the raisin, a blend of the grape. I also feel like I'm getting some cherry notes in there. Certainly feeling the chocolate, I'll tell you that. This one's gorgeous to me. I gotta tell you, the brandy one really jumps out at me. I've noticed for whatever reason, it finishes crisper than the others. Can, I don't know what the changes in the barrel would cause that. It could be just me, I don't know, but that's how I'm feeling at this particular moment. But it was a rough year. The flavors come together very well, too. It feels, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, like the flavors meld together better in this brandy version for some reason. So I'm going to put that down now. And, and I'm going to move to the 2017, which is what I got the full pour of. Uh, the flight is 16, and if you want the, the 10 ounce pour of the 2017, there was 20. Again, I, I'm, that's certainly not cheap, I guess, but this is a great big beer. I believe it's 11%. So I'm going to say it's okay. I mean, it's not something typically that I do, but I mean, this is a special release, man. And guess what? I didn't have to stand in line for a pseudo craft. This is an actual craft beer aged in various spirit barrels that I was able to walk in, buy the amount that I wanted to take home, and a flight. And I didn't have to stand in a line and pay way too much for an overhyped beer. Macro masquerading as a craft, right? And here I have an actual craft imperial staff aged spirit bourbon. Gosh, it's gorgeous. Uh, here's what I'm thinking though uh, on this 2017 that I'm drinking now is that I had a few 2016s at home. Oh, I do want to drink one side by side once I get home. But I am telling my my, uh, my initial thought is that this is going to age beautifully. I do think some are going to think this is too hot. Right now. I'm not one of those people because I'm not fan of hard but I do think some are going to think that. To me, it's fine, but it is a beer that's going to age itself well. And I don't know why at that very moment I just picked up some coconut like this. I don't know why it just hit me right at that second. Again, that could be me. <laughs> I am of the mindset that I don't think anybody's wrong when it comes to beer taste. 
whatever you taste, whatever you smell, whatever you get is what you get. And nobody should tell you you're wrong. Uh, now it is true that certain styles should give you specific things. But if you're not familiar with those flavors, you're not going to, or aromas, you're not going to smell and taste them that way. So your, your mind may interpret those flavors and aromas as something else. So that's why I never want to correct you. I, I have made that mistake in the past. I have since changed my ways. I think it's wrong to correct somebody for what they taste. You can you could explain you know the, what a style should get, but I don't think you should say they're wrong because what they get is what they get. And what I get from this beer is pure freaking joy. <laughs> One reason I don't like to call what I do a beer review is because I, I, I'm more about how it makes you feel. Yeah, I'm more about the emotion than the actual specifics and the science. I, this beer brings me extreme joy. I love this brewery and, and I hate to repeat myself, but I always feel like I have to because I say so many good things about the brewery. I feel like I need to drop at least one negative and, and then... If I have a complaint, is that you don't, you don't really have a bar to sit at. You come up and order, and you go to a table, and you go back and order again. Uh, I just love sitting at a bar. It's, a lot of it is that it is my particular upbringing. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in bars as a youngster. Uh, when it was all you were allowed to bring youngsters in a bar. That's the way things were done uh, back in the '60s and '70s and in California and anyway. So if I have a complaint, that's it, is that they don't have a bar to sit at. You can't stand by the bar anymore, that's it. I, I have done that sometimes, too. I, I always sit down over to the side where I'm doing a video because I feel like I'm, you know, uh, encroaching on other folks if I do that at the bar. But I do like to just stand at the bar, too. But again, my only complaint about Mother's Brewery is I can't sit at the damn bar. Other than that, everything about this place is perfect, in my opinion. They're doing great beer. They're doing innovative beer. They're doing great solid style. So to me, there's a brewery that does it all from top to bottom. And then they, they pop out a beer like this, which is beyond gorgeous. There's a lot of folks doing great imperial stuff. There's a lot of very high craft brews doing barrel age variants. Over the imperial stuff, in my opinion, and I'm not saying I've had them all. But in my opinion, there is one better than this. There isn't one of any better quality. Now, whether you like taste preference of this or that better, that's another argument altogether. But this beer is top notch and worth every day of plenty. And the proceeds aren't going to a big conglomerate that doesn't give a rat's ass about anybody. And did I mention I was able to walk right up to one? Walk right up. I was the first one in. There's a few folks behind me, but they worked in beer over Nobody had to stand in line for three hours for an overhyped beer that doesn't measure up. I'm having a great spirit barrel, imperial staff. And I didn't have to stand in line forever for it, so there you go. Alright, since I'm running out of room on my camera here, I'm going to stop the video, but I'm going to go back and look in. And part two. <laughs> so bottom line for me is all variants of rates. Uh, I, uh, back on the 2015 or 2017, I had the the mezcal, the rum, and the brandy. So the only I, I, on this list here, the only one that I missed was 2016 but because I had that at home. I figured it went to hell. This 2015 is gorgeous, which tells me I wish I had saved some. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to pick up my 2016 bag. 
I have recently drank a couple of my 2016. I think I had one last night. What I did notice was that I just felt it was, it was, it was beautiful. It reminds me a lot of what I'm drinking now this season too. But as I'm finishing this up now, I'm, I'm noticing some, not necessarily sour, but the tart like notes. And I think it's very similar to a sour cherry like note. Just a beautiful beer. Mother's does everything well, in my opinion. So there you go. Hey, I'm kind of beer with her name. We'll sign off for now. Maybe one note as I'm finishing this 2015, I just noticed. In the finish, the cocoa, this cocoa nips really linger a lot. I'm noticing on this particular one. So here, anyway, I'm going to put that down. And now I'm done. One last note on the mezcal, <laughs> the mezcal for uh, it, it is the most interesting of the four. I got all the, the five, I guess, I'm having here. No, I, again, I'm going to say that it's not particularly my favorite of the four, but it's the most interesting. How about that? It is so interesting that if I had to, if, if I get a chance again to come in here, which I don't know if I will, I would, I would probably enjoy having a full pour of it, just to try to decipher it. The flavors are so interesting. That mezcal barrel does something very different to this milk that the other barrels don't do. Um, they don't have a bourbon variance on here, but the, the, the rum, the brandy, the, the regular milk, they all come out a certain way, but this mezcal takes it in a whole other direction. Uh, the, the rum and the brandy are different, but there are some similarities. This one does not possess any of the same similarities. So I wouldn't enjoy having a full pour of it just to try to figure it out. Because on this flight, I, I won't be able to. So there you go. Hey, I'm kind of doing some work. I might be done this time. I'll probably be done with one more note from the others as well. Oh, baby. <laughs> That's what daddy likes. So, hey, I'm finishing up the rum barrel mill, and I wanted to give a last note on it. I've noticed, in my opinion, it felt a little sweeter than the others. I'm not saying that's good, bad, or, okay. or indifferent. I'm just telling you what differences I'm getting. But the rum barrel does really accentuate well those cocoa notes. I'm really feeling that a lot. I am feeling the raisin as well and other dark fruit notes that appear. But in my opinion, the sweetness of the rum barrel really brings out those cocoa notes. So there you go. That's my final shot on that one. And I'll come back with my parting shots on the brandy mix. So I'm on my brandy barrel milk. What I did notice about the brandy barrel milk, for whatever reason, the flavor seems to melt together at the best. Again, I'm not saying this is my favorite version of all of them. I'm telling you the differences I'm getting along the way. For whatever reason, that brandy barrel helps bring all those flavors together. It also adds a lot of other fruit notes uh, that may not be noticeable in the total package of the milk once it's all blended. But when you have just this brandy barrel milk, you do feel the raisin, you do feel the cocoa that you're supposed to get. You feel the imperial stout notes that you get when you get the big mall in it. But in this brandy barrel, I'm also getting other fruit notes. Um, I'm getting some, some grape, not raisin, but grape. I'm getting some cherry, I'm getting some date, I'm getting fig, I'm getting other notes that don't appear as, as, as uh, dominantly as uh, that, uh, that appear more dominantly in this version than they do the other ones. Hey man, cut me some slack. This is my turn. <laughs> I'm finishing off my last one of the four variants. <laughs> or the three variants of my 2015 of the flight. So there you go. I'm going to come back one more time with some notes on the 2017. So enjoy, baby. Okay, so some final, final notes. <laughs> Tom, well, I might be, man. <laughs> I just finished a flight of milk, and I'm finishing a 10-ounce pour. I'm not one of those guys that pours a 12-ounce beer or goes out and has a beer and then talks about how wonderful it is and how terrible it is after only two ounces. 
I'm actually drinking a little people. Anyways, uh, I hey, I am the George Clinton of beer guys, man. <laughs> I'm gonna see if anybody's old enough to figure out that reference. I'm the George Clinton of beer guys. I'm actually doing this stuff, uh, you know. Look up George Clinton. Anyways, so 2017, uh, a blend of bourbon, rum, brandy, and rye. Oh, uh, brandy, rum, okay, bourbon. The bourbon rum brandy and rum. In the past, I think it was five. They added another one. Uh, there was other another barrel. Here, just a bourbon rum brandy and rum. So four. There you go. That's the difference I'm getting. You know, when I pop a bottle at home, I'll get more detail. Here I'm out. I've already had all this. And my pal is clearly shot at this point. I finished a flight of four, and I'm finishing a 10-ounce pour of this great, big, beautiful 11 first time Imperial Stout. So big cocoa notes, as you should get. Big chocolate notes. Uh, specifically dark chocolate. You're gonna feel that raisin because there's a raisin in there. Man. You may get date and big notes as well, another dark fruit. Um, as there are some of these variances, I've got some uh, some cherry, you may pick up some of that in there. Uh, uh, specifically sour cherry, I guess I'll give you one. I'm getting almost some, some candy fruit like you know. There's a whole lot of things you're going to get in a beer like this. It is wildly complex. And it, I think if you poured a, a full half sample and give it to 10 different people that weren't allowed to talk to each other, and just got their got their notes at the end of it. They're all going to tell you something different. That's how complex a beer like this is. That's what it's meant to be. That's why I hate correcting folks because nobody's wrong. What you taste is what you taste. What the aromas you get are your own. Bottom line, it's a great beer. It is my favorite one. And, uh, I think that's mostly because because this is my local brewery, right? I, I'm from Springfield, Maryland. Right here, mothers. So I love this group. I love what they do. But besides that, I also think it's it's, it's great. I think quality wise, there is none better. Now you may have a particular favorite. You may have the maybe taste preferences and others that you might like better. But there, in my opinion, you can't argue quality. There is no doubt that this beer is every bit the quality as any any other out there, especially in the craft beer world. And I'm going to go out on the limb here and say, as far as those pseudos pretending to be crafts that aren't really, this one is better. It is much better. It is heads and shoulders above that craft beer that you stood in line for three hours to get. I am part of the beer whisper. I'm making friends and influence some people. That's what I do, man. I drink beer and I say stuff. I am part of the beer whisper, Dr. Larry.